we're going to look at some questions in assorted topics. So we'll look at question on equilibrium and government interventions. So we're given the demand function, P is equal to 12 minus 0 0.5 QD. The supply function is given by 0 0.1 QS. So this is just telling you that this is demand and this is supply. So how do you sketch these? All right, so price here is given by what? 12 minus 0 0.5 Q. Then here our demand is given by 0 0.1 Q. So equilibrium happens when demand is equal to supply. Four minus zero point five Q is equal to zero point one Q. So at equilibrium, we put the letters on one side. So here we're going to have four is equal to zero point six. So to solve for Q, we divide by zero point six on both sides. So our Q therefore at equilibrium is 20. Then to find P, you can use any of these two equations. So P therefore is equal to two. Now to um, illustrate these, I said, 12 minus 0.5 Q, you put the letters on one side, P plus 0.5 Q is equal to 12. So I divide, there's an invisible one there. So 1 into 12 is 12. 0 0.5 into 12, we get 24. So to cut the P at 12 and the Q at 24. All right, so it's cutting the P at 12, the Q at 24. And this one is 0 0.1 Q. It has no intercept, so meaning it's just starting from zero directly there. And here the graph is 0 0.1 Q. Here it is what? P is equal to 12 minus 0 0.5 Q. So we said the equilibrium under price is two. The equilibrium under quantity, what did we calculate? 20. Are we clear so far? No, me, I'm not. Where are you not clear? Whenever I would like this okay. function, it has no intercept like where it's cutting. This one's cutting at 12. This one's not cutting anywhere, it's starting from zero. So you need just draw a line straight. Okay. This one I've already explained. You put the numbers on one side. I think I explained all this yesterday. The letters on one side. There's a one there, one into 12, that's 12. 0 0.5 into 12, 24. So these are the two intercepts, 12 and 24. For these ones, don't even think twice. If it has no intercepts, just starting from 0 0.1, just straight line in between them, starting from zero. As simple as that. Okay. For the equilibrium, we just equate these two. So <clears throat> in this case, we have our two important curves. So we have this, which is our consumer surplus, and this is our producer surplus. So the distance from here to here is 10. And here we have 20. Here we have 20. And distance from here to here we have 2. So half base times height. Our base here is what? 20. And our height is what? 10. And collectively, we're going to get what? 100. 
that is our consumer surplus. Our producer surplus is half pH. So our base is 20 and our height is 2. We can just we can drop them two times it's the same answer. So then we get a 20. Then when we add these two collectively, we'll go to what we call the social welfare or total surplus, which is 120. So if we go back to our question, we're being asked, number one, we're asked to find what? The equilibrium price and quantity. So price, we've already calculated, and quantity, we've calculated. Equilibrium price is two, quantity is 20. Now, government wants to set a minimum price of 2.5. That is a price sale. So what is the new quantity of the milk at the marketplace? So government has set a minimum price of 2.5. A gallon. So what is the new quantity of the milk? So we must understand that government indulges in these markets by setting up regulations that will control the market to avoid frustrations. So government has set this price of 2.5 here. So I've been asked what would be the quantity sold in the marketplace. So here, we just go to this demand function. What is the demand function? 12 minus what? 0.5 QD. 12 minus 2.5 QD. So where there's price, we put 2.5. 2.5 is equal to 12 minus 0.5 Q. To make 0.5 subject, it will go this side and this one. They'll swap positions. So to make it subject, I like working with positive values. So 12 minus what? 2.5. So we're going to get 9.5. So 9.5, if you're going to make Q subject divided by 0 0.5 on both sides, so you're going to get 19. So if the price has been set at 2.5, the quantity of the gallons will be 19. So this is where the 19 is coming from. So this is where the 19 is coming from. All right. Any questions at this point? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions on that question? Okay, if it's clear, you can go. I've to... missed it, but we'll still ask a question. Another, um, question. So we have been given. Question. Collings, can you get me? Yes, please. Yes, I'm saying some of us missed us. This is when we, we, we didn't know there was class. Okay. My question is. Mm -hmm. 
there where you can go back to that question. There where it says, um, I don't know if you've tackled it, Abba, to help dairy question. farmers. Huh? Okay, so question two, we have a product by a firm. The price is given by this. The fixed cost is this, and the variable cost is that. So we need to understand that uh, cost theory, total cost is got what? Uh, total fixed cost plus variable cost. So in this case, we're given our total fixed cost as well, 10, and variable cost is half Q2 plus Q, 5Q. So just combine them. So we need our total cost here for what? 10 plus half plus 5q. This is our total cost function. All right. All right, together. 10 plus half q squared plus what? Plus 5q. That is our total cost. Marginal cost is going to differentiate this. Please meet your mics. So 10 is a constant. It will drop. Then half Q2 will be what? Q. Then plus 5Q will be what? 5. So this is our marginal cost. Average is anything divided by quantity. So average total cost. Simply, we divide the total cost by quantity. So 10 plus half Q squared plus 5Q. We divide each of them by quantity, each of them by quantity, each of them by quantity. So we're going to have 10 over Q plus half Q plus 5. This is our total average cost. Average cost is 10 over Q plus half Q. 10 over 10 over Q is plus half Q plus 5. So we're answering the question. Take note of some questions from this module usually reappear. So I need you to understand. It. So we found the total cost, average cost, and marginal cost. Okay. And the expressions of um, total average marginal revenue. So we're given 40 minus 2Q. So if we're given price is what, what? 40 minus 2Q. The cost here is simply price times quantity. All right. Price times quantity. So how do you find um, the total revenue? Yes.
So this is how we find the total revenue. The marginal revenue, I simply want to differentiate the total revenue with respect to the quantity. So this is 40 Q, I'm going to get 40. Minus 2 Q squared, I'm going to get what? 4. This is called our marginal revenue. Okay. So average revenue by dividing 40 over Q, everything average, average is, is the total revenue divided by quantity. So 40 over Q is equal to 40. Two Q, um, this is two Q squared. Two Q squared over Q divided two Q. So you notice that average revenue usually be the same as the price. And if you're asked to sketch the graph for the demand, marginal revenue, and marginal cost. Okay. It usually comes out something like this. Our average our marginal revenue is half of what? Average revenue. And marginal cost looks like that. That is how this one's coming. Okay, so I want us to delve into filling in the tables. So if we're given a table like this, we're asked to fill in. We need to understand that total fixed cost plus total variable cost should be given as our total cost. So total cost is what? Variable cost plus fixed cost. Okay. So we can fill in, help me fill in. What are we getting? Let's fill in column number four. Column number Yes, so the total fixed cost, we know that um, when we add this plus that, it should give us a total. So obviously here that should be 18 plus zero to get that. So this is 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. 18 throughout. Are we together? Yes. So fixed cost is fixed constant. Anyone behind on the fixed cost? And meaning, we'll get the total cost we're just adding. This plus that, what do we get? 68. This plus that, what do we get? 78. This plus that, 88. This plus that, we get 99. This plus that will get um, 102. This 
as that we get what 18 and 20 not 120 one third this plus that what we get mm, 152 we're just adding them an average fixed cost anything average is divided by quantity so fixed cost divided by quantity is what average fixed cost total variable cost divided by quantity is average variable cost total cost divided by quantity is average total cost and marginal cost is change in total cost but change in what quantity so here we're just dividing q into the total fixed cost so one into 18 is 18 two into 18 is nine three into 18 is six okay, four into 18 that we get 4.15. 5. 5 into 18, that we get 3.6. 6 into 18, 3. 7 to 18, 2. Point what? 2. Point, uh, 6 something. Uh, 8 into, into 18. Uh, two point two point two into eighteen the two ten to eighteen one point eight so costs keep growing keep going down as the quantity is going up so the variable cost we're just dividing zero into something it's infinite that's why I put dash one into fifteen is fifteen two into uh twenty eight is fourteen three into uh, 40 we get 13.33 4 into 18 we get what uh, 4 into 50 we get um, 12.5 4.5 I, I get the logic eh? mm, trying 12. to get the logic just using these formulas Six into so we go on and on. Average total cost. Twelve. And dividing the quantity into the total cost. So zero into eighteen is infinite. One into the total cost, which is thirty-three, you get thirty-three. Two into forty-six, you get twenty-three. Three into fifty-eight, you get nineteen. So what do we get this one? Divide four into what? Sixty-eight, which is about one carry. Two, eight, twenty-seven. Get twenty-seven. Then five. We divided into what? Uh, seventy-eight. Five into seventy-eight. So this is one. Carry two. So fifteen point six. We go on and on. All right, on and on. Then imagine, of course, you're just getting the differences here. All right, so the total cost here, this one minus zero, it is a dash. Then here you get the three minus 18, you get 25. Because here it's one throughout, divided by one, one. Then for the six minus what? 33, we get 13. Then 58 minus uh, 46, we get 12. Then here 68 minus 58, we get what? 10. Then here again, 78 minus 68, we get 10. Then 88 minus 78, we get 10. 99 minus 88, we get what? 11. So we keep getting the differences there. That's how we fit in this table. This one, if it comes as a compulsory, you need to really, really, really um, know it. So these ones are from your handout. You need to understand them all together. Can I just take a look at the, the, the I want to see the, yeah, up, up, up. thank you. Okay, you can go, you can change. All right. So,
We can um, proceed. If anyone is behind. We can now go to all these are tables, the same principles. We can now go to a question to do with um, production. Same production, labor, and total product. So average product of labor is divide the total product of labor over the labor units. So one into 60 is 60. 2 into 170 is what? Here it's 8, 31, 85. 3 into 270 is 90. We go on and on, just dividing there. Then here, the first one, this does not pair. The change in total product of labor over change in labor units. That is what the total product of labor. So 60 minus dash is dash. 170 minus 60 divided by two minus one. So just keep, if the difference is one, I'll just start subtracting this minus that, this minus that, that's what we get here. So 160 minus that is 110. 270 minus that is 100. 368 minus that, you keep putting the answers until the last part here. 480 minus um, 495, it is negative what? Okay, say 504 minus um, 504, this is zero. 495 minus um, 504 is negative 9. 490 minus that, it is negative what? Negative 15. So you can get negatives in short. Don't feel uh, you are doing the wrong thing. So this is the concept. Are you just subtracting? Because I thought I thought you I heard you say uh 170 minus 60. It's 170 minus 60 divided by uh, 2 minus 1. one. Now, since all of them, there's just one, one, one there. So it's a wasting your, your energy subtracting the side. Just subtract this, 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 this. Because all the differences are dividing by one. You get it? Yes. Yes, okay, it's clear enough. You just need to be clear uh, where if there's a four here and you had a six there, you would have a problem there. There's a difference of two. So be careful. Just make sure that all of them are there. <clears throat> so you just subtract by one on all of them. You divide by one on all of them, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Colin. Yes, please. I was trying to understand the previous question on my own. Mm -hmm. So I want to confirm something. If you can just go back to it, please. Which one? This one? Yes. So with this, with this one, when you, um, these ones which have total cost, marginal cost, you do, we do with them together. Then these ones which are three, three, like total fixed costs, you do them together. What do you mean you do them together? Everything average like you divide by quantity. So average uh, fixed cost is actually dividing this by quantity. This divided by that, this divided by that, this divided by that. Like the total fixed cost, you got the first the first number on average fixed cost there, right? Fixed cost the is, total a, fixed is cost. addition of the variable cost and the fixed cost. That's the formula. So when you add fixed cost plus variable cost, you get total cost. So this plus that, we get that. This plus that, we get that. This plus that, we get that. We're we adding this to Oh, okay, 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 thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we also need to identify the three stages of production. Mm -hmm. What are the three stages of production? So production has three important stages that you need to know, even based on the answers you're going to find here. So the three stages of production are as follows. Number one, 
you must understand that stage one, basically, is the point where we have what we call increasing retention scale. In stage one, as more units of an input is added to production while holding inputs like fixed cost, total product increases at an increasing rate. So I'd shown you, if you go to your, um, your handout, um, it has a graph showing you the three stages of production. They look like this. So for you to understand what I'm explaining, you must understand this important graph. Okay. So I'm trying to beam it so that you can, you can see it. Okay, so the three stages of production are epitomized by this. The stage one, stage two, and stage three. So in stage one, the total product is increasing, the marginal product is increasing, average product, they're all increasing, okay? So this was happening in stage one, so we have what? All the three, holding. so the total product is increasing at an increasing rate, additional units, the marginal product is also increasing, leading to higher productivity. This stage occurs when all the three dimensions are increasing. In stage two, what happens? We have uh, total product continues to increase at a diminishing rate. Then here, our um, marginal product of uh, labor, as you can see here, what is happening in stage two? The total product is still increasing. The marginal average product and the marginal product are declining. In stage three, the total product starts declining. The marginal product is negative. The average product keeps declining. I don't know if you can remember that. Okay, so we need to re remember the three stages of production in terms of what? In the marginal product, average product, total product, product. Okay. So let me summarize that again for you. Let me summarize that again for you so that you're able to fully understand because this is a 20 mark question. So I need you to really put much mind. So when we're dealing with the three stages of production, let me use the word copy so that you're able to follow through. So the three stages of production, we have one, which is the increasing retention scale, number two, diminishing retention scale, number three, the negative retention scale. It can be explained in terms of marginal product, average product, total product, these concepts, right? So in stage one, the total product, initially more units of the variable are added, so total product is increasing. This corresponds to an upward sloping total product. The marginal product of labor in stage one is also greater than the average. So marginal product is on top of average product, all right? <clears throat> That's what we need to understand. So number one, total product is increasing. Number two, marginal product is more than average product. In stage two, this one swap. The average product is now more than the marginal product, but both of them are declining. Then here, the total product keeps increasing until it reaches the maximum. When the total product starts falling, that is now stage three. Here, when the marginal product starts going to the negative, that is stage three. Here, when the average product is still continuously falling, that is still stage three, which is called the, the negative retention scale. 
So marginal product is less than zero. Average product of um, <clears throat> labor is uh, less than zero as well. So these are the three stages of production. I'll send the, the notes on the group so that you can be able to go through. Are we together? Okay. Any questions so far? So I want you to try this question. An optimization. Oh, let's try question number two. So what are we given question number two? The demand function. And we're told that in this demand function, we've been given the price of good X, Y, and so let's substitute these figures there. Well, in that question, they'll always give us the um, price and the quantity, right? Yes. To replace. So, like, if we're replacing, can can a person just go direct, like, in finding the owners, uh, whatever, whatever? Like, you just go straight in just getting. Like, you get for the, for the, for the PX, you get the... The two, you get the two, then you, sorry, for the P, what am I even saying? Mm. Like the ones that they give you, if maybe if they gave you the one on the, on the X, you just go down there and do the fit one, then you do the two, the, the 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 price that you found for everything. Mm -hmm. They sometimes they give you the. Is it the price or the total, whatever it is? So if first, what we're doing yesterday, okay, you can you yeah can, you can use two methods. You can first replace when you replace mm -hmm. the figures there, you find the quantity, all right. So in this, if you replace very well. The quantity because we're given this equation so price of x is five y is ten minus one thousand when you put that you get fifteen all right then let's calculate the price assist of demand it's simply given by the gradient of demand of x times what the price of x over the quantity of x that we have so what's the gradient of x negative two the price of x is what? 5. And the q is what? 15 there. So what we get here, we're going to get that is 0 0.67. Demand here is what? In elastic. Then when we go to cross price elasticity of demand, we get the gradient of what? The other good y times price. This is x, x. So here, price of good y over quantity of good x. So that's a gradient for good um, y, negative 0 0.5. The actual price of good y, 10. Here over what? 
15. So when you multiply that, we get negative 0 0.1, 23. Here, what is our comment? Don't say inelastic. This is a negative. We say it's a complementary good. X and Y are complements. Then we go to income elasticity of demand. We get the gradient of income times the income itself over the quantity of X. All right, the quantity of income, the gradient is what? 0 0.01. Then our M is 1,000. Then over our what? Our 15 there. So here, we're going to get positive what? 0 0.3. What? 0 .3. Since the positive answer here, we're simply going to say it's a normal good. All right. So this is how that question is supposed to be answered. Any questions? Any questions? We are all clear. Okay, if we're all clear. We we'll lastly go to a question that was discussed in the group on optimization. Now we optimize function. Okay, so let's look at question number, this question there. Who wants to try to answer that question? Can you read it out? Read out uh panel. Yes, Ben Lop, read out the question. Or anyone, read out Chip or read out the question. Um, which question? <laughs> uh, managerial economics, this one, on optimization. Okay. okay. Managerial economies more often than no talk of constrained optimization. One, demonstrate your understanding of constrained optimization. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I go on or I leave it at that? Just leave it at that. Let's uh, discuss it. Uh, uh, one by one. Okay. Okay. Cool. So. Can we answer now? Let's explain the concept of. Um, How do we understand that concept? Constraint optimization.
I explained this yesterday. Concern the communication is a very important concept that you need to know. So, what is a constraint to start with? It's a limitation. It limits the assumption. All right. So, concept of constraint optimization is a. Uh, Explained as follows. The concept of constraint optimization refers to a process of maximizing or minimizing a function whilst taking into account um, certain constraints. All right, so constraint optimization is simply maximizing gain whilst minimizing your cost. So the objective of constraint optimization um, is as follows, okay? The objective is to find the optimal solution that maximizes or minimizing the objective whilst adhering to the given constraints. Number one, the constraints that are faced by a firm. So a firm often has limited resources, so its decisions are constrained by the budget limitation. So this constraint will determine how much the firm can spend on the inputs X and Y, um, marketing and other activities to maximize uh, gain. It's also constrained by resource of, of the cost, resource constraints. The company may face limitations on various resources such as labor, raw materials, machinery. So the availability and the cost of these can be influenced and influence production levels and therefore impact the firm's decision. The regulatory uh, constraint, a firm may also face legal and regulatory requirements imposed by authorities. These constraints may include environmental issues, labor issues, health standards and licensing requirements and tax, of course. So these are regulatory constraints. Then we also have technological constraints where a firm, their production and available technology can impose constraints on its operations so the firm must work within the limitation of the technology or the machinery. So this is to answer the part here where we're being asked to explain um, demonstrate your understanding of control organization and identify four constraints faced by a firm. So we talked about these constraints, right? So we have um, Budget constraints, source constraints, regulatory constraints, and technological constraints. Are they understandable? These are limitations. We are limited by the budget. We are limited by resources. We are limited by the law. We are limited by technology. So these are the main constraints that we have. All right. So we go to the next question here where we're being asked. Um, some economists have put forward a theory of a firm that suggests that firms aim to maximize sales as opposed to maximizing uh, profits or value of the firm. Briefly explain two reasons why managers want to maximize sales rather than profits. Okay, what are the two reasons why uh, managers want to maximize uh, sales rather than profit according to that theory? Okay, so here is how you should answer it. Number one, The reason why managers would want to maximize our sales rather than profits. So this theory is a traditional theory which emphasizes that profit maximization um, of a firm is not as priority as maximizing sales. The reasons for maximizing sales over profits is number one, the market share and dominance. By maximizing the sales, the firms will increase their market share and will establish dominance in the market. People and firms today want to have power and economies of scale. This can only come by dominating the market. 
So long-term growth and expansion, firms will first focus on sales maximization so that they have a long-term growth and expansion. So this is so by expanding their market share and firms can attract more customers, gain brand loyalty and create opportunities for future profitability. Number two, give reasons why the theory of a firm in terms of value, um, theory of a firm in terms of value rather than sales maximization is emphasized. Number one, financial uh, viability. When you are looking at profit maximization or increasing value of a firm, it ensures that you have financial viability and sustainability. So generating sales is crucial in covering costs and investing in a firm and rewarding shareholders and attracting. So this is an answer in part two of the question where we're being asked to explain part two, advise two reasons why theories and practitioners to remain, uh, retain the theory uh, of a firm to look at um, maximizing of value rather than the sales maximization. So it's the opposite question where we are being asked to um, um, retain the theory of a firm rather than maximization number one, financial viability. If we're going to look at profit maximization or increasing the worth of the firm, we're going to look at sustainability and viability. So by generating more profits, you're also rewarding the owners of the capital who are the shareholders and you're also attracting more investors to come in. So also increasing shareholders' wealth by maximizing profits the values align to the goal of creating shareholder wealth. So shareholders who are the real owners of the business will expect a return. So prioritizing them will motivate them. All right? So overall, we must understand that sales maximization is a valid strategy for some firms. The area of the firm is also a valid and relevant strategy because it looks at the main stakeholders of the firm who are the owners of the business. All together, all following. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So now we go to the latter part of the question, then we can release you. Okay, so that you have your own individual time to attend the car. So the next part of the question is asking us we are given a total cost and the price function. So we're being asked to maximize the profit. All right. So, um, it's in the question there, what are you being asked? Maximize profit. Quantity. Maximize um, profit in terms of price and quantity. <clears throat> okay, so I gave you a general format of uh, maximizing. Just one, find that function. Step two, differentiate it. Step three, do what? Um, so in this question, we're given our price function. What was the price function? 200 minus 5Q. 200 minus 5Q. Mm -hmm. So we need to come up with the total revenue. Price is 200 minus what? 5Q. Total revenue is what? Price times quantity. Mm -hmm. So here we have 200 minus 5Q. And I put a Q there. So TR is got what? 200Q minus 5Q squared. Are you together so far? Yes, yes. Then our margin revenue is got what? If I check this 200Q minus 5Q is what? 10Q. 200 minus 10Q. Oh, yeah. Then we're also given our total cost function, which was given by what? 100 plus 5Q squared, total cost 100 plus 5Q squared. Total cost is 100 plus 5Q squared. So to differentiate that one, we're going to get our marginal cost. What is our marginal cost in this case? Thank you. So how do we maximize profit? Profit is maximized in two ways. Number one, let's equate marginal revenue to marginal cost. So what is our marginal revenue? 200 minus 10Q. Marginal cost is 10Q. 
And this one goes this other side. 10Q plus 10Q. We're going to have 100. 200 is got what? 20Q. So meaning our Q is got what? 10. That is how we find the Q. And to find the price, you substitute this one here. This question might come. You need to pay particular attention. So we're going to have 200 minus 50, which is 150. Is that clear? That is how yes. we maximize our profit. We do that there, multiply that through, and if we solve, we get Q is equal to 2,000. <laughs> Very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm saying yeah. um, uh, if you could pack and ask properly, because if you are you have so much on loud alpha and they keep repeating, but just to repeat what I just said, to maximize profit, you need to understand maximization happens uh, as follows. To maximize revenue, MR is going to zero. To maximize profit. MRI is good, what? MC or marginal profit is good to zero. So in this case, what we did is we first calculated the total revenue P times Q, which is 200Q minus 5Q, so this is 200Q minus 5Q squared. Then when we differentiate it, we're going to have marginal revenue as 200 minus 10Q. Then we go to the total cost. Total cost is 100 plus 5Q squared. When we differentiate it, we get 10Q. So these two, when you create them, we're maximizing profit. So marginal revenue is going to marginal cost. So in this case, we just 200 minus 10Q is going to 10. So this one goes to add the 20Q is going to 200, meaning our Q is going to what? 10. And when you get this Q, they're asking for the price. You put the price in there, the 10. So it'll be 200 minus 50. Alternatively, you use my general formula, which is very nice. Step one, you find the function you have to maximize. Step two, you... Uh, differentiate. Step three, you equate to zero. Step four, you solve for what? Q and P. So we know that profit is got what? Although it's longer, it's very accurate. Total revenue minus total cost, always put the total cost in brackets. So our total revenue is what? Uh, calculated as 200Q minus 5Q squared. So 200Q. Minus 5q squared. So minus open brackets. Our total cost was what? 100 plus 5q squared. 100 plus 5k squared. So we find the profit function. So here 200 q minus 5k squared minus 100 minus 5k squared. So here profit is therefore equal to 100 Q minus five minus five is minus 10 Q squared minus 100. This is a profit function. Step one, find the function. Step two, differentiate it. So profit function, when differentiate it, you're going to have 200 minus 20 Q. That is zero. Step three, get to zero. So profit, when you put an apostrophe, it means you have differentiated it. Get it to zero here, 200 minus 20Q, and you put this um, subject there. So 20Q is got what? 200. So you divide by 20 on both sides. You get the same answer, Q is got what? 10. And then now uh, substitute this Q into the original price function. Our price was what? 200 minus 5Q. So with this Q, you put a 10. So mean our price is equal to 150. And the last question is now find the maximum profit. I like this stage because now you go back here where the skew put it, the answer we found, which was what? 
10. The maximum profit is the value of the profit itself. 200, you put out 10 minus 100, 10 squared minus 100. So here to write 2000 minus 1000 minus 100. So we're going to get 900 as well. Maximum profit. So this now gives you a fully fledged answer where you're going to get the whole max conclusively. So this is how this question was supposed to be attempted. Calculate the profit maximizing quantity that is Q, which you found as five. Profit maximizing price that is P, which you found as what? One fifth. Then calculate the firm's maximum profit. Then substitute in the profit function. Such a question expected. All right. Any questions? Yes. Oh, calling. Can you hear me now? Yes. No, I was just saying that uh, when finding, when maximizing and when finding, after max, when well, we find all those when you differentiate, when we reach at the end, we are solving for Q and P. We just do the same thing as in, um, we just do the same thing as the same thing we do when finding the, is it the equilibrium price and quantity? Yes, it's the same thing. Yeah. The same thing. Let me see the solution. Okay. Yeah, the solutions. Okay, so we're given um a multilinear question where we're given Q is equal to 12,000 minus 3px plus 4py minus 1m plus 2a. So we need to substitute the figures that have been given here. So where there's price of put x, we put 200. You are assisting me by quickly substituting the figures there. Price of put y, we're given us 15. We put 15 there. And price of uh, income, we're given as what? 10,000. And finally, advertising here, 2,000. So the total here is going to be what? When you substitute them. I think it is there in the miracle kit. It is 1275. 1275. Um, this is some question. Okay, it's just similar. Okay, so quantity is what? 1275. So our quantity was given by. Um, Function twelve thousand. This question is in the in the handout exactly, so you can expect it as well. Um, twelve thousand minus three px. Three px. Uh huh. Then what is I given? Plus four py. Then what else are we given? Minus one M plus two A. Minus one M plus two A. So already analysis of this, we're able to tell the types of goods that we have here. If the signs are different, these are what? Opposing each other. Yeah, substitute goods. You're able to tell the income elasticity. If it's negative here, it is an inferior good. If it is a positive, it is a um, normal good. So we've been given the price to substitute. So 215, 10,000. 215, 10,000, and 2,000. So in substitute 200, 
15, 10,000, and 2,000. What did you get? And it was what? 12.75. So to find on price elasticity, which is what price that's still demand, let's get the gradient of what x times price of x over quantity of x. So here, what was the gradient of x? Minus three. The price of x, 200 over the qx that you found is 12.75. What do we get? Negative 0.1. This would be in elastic demand. Okay. That is an elastic demand. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then you go to cross price elasticity, you get a gradient for good y times the price for good y over the quantity of x. The gradient for good y is what? Positive 4. The price of good y is what? 15 over 12.75. We get a positive 0. Point something. Whatever it is, but the key thing is a positive answer. Since it's positive, it's a substitute good. If we go to negative, it's a complementary good. Then we go to income elasticity of demand. We get the gradient for what? The gradient for income times the actual income over quantity of income, of quantity there. So here, what is the gradient for income? Negative one. The actual income is 10,000. And here we have 1275. Whatever you're getting, you're getting A negative something, x, x, x. So this is an inferior good. If it was a positive, it is a normal good. All right, together. So this is how this question is supposed to be tackled. There was a question you're doing in class uh, in the group. I don't know which question it is. I hope I've answered it here. Uh, Maggie had inboxed me. But I give you the privilege of uh, Bring that question up in case um, you haven't resolved it or you're okay with it now. Um, okay. Um, apologies. I think I joined in late. I, I didn't get the link. I don't know what happened. So I think that's why I joined a bit late. So I'm afraid of uh, taking you back a bit. But then I think the question that I had sent you in the inbox. Um, just just a minute, please. Okay. Um, we I tried to solve it, uh, but then I I wasn't sure on the 